Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about the reflection settings of the iRay Super Shader. This is a very important setting to learn about when trying to create various types of reflective surfaces and allows you to completely customize the shiny or rough appearance of the objects in your scene. The reflectivity section of the iRay panel can be found in the Materials tab. Here you'll have two parameters, reflectance and edge strength. We're also going to explore the parameters in the coding section as well as the anisotropy section. Let's take a look at the reflectivity section first. The reflectance of your object is based on its roughness and metallic maps, which you can see here. If we pump up that value, you'll notice right away in the preview render that the entire object will get much more reflective. Some might say a little overboard. To make this a bit more even and to focus the reflective specular highlights on the object a bit more, you can go into the Adjust Color panel with your metallic map selected and increase the brightness, therefore increasing the metallic value of your object. The more metallic an object is, the more intense and focused you will often find the specular highlights to be. On the other hand, we can also reduce the brightness of the roughness map, which will have a similar effect. However, notice that when we decrease the brightness of the roughness map, that we'll also see a much stronger reflection of our IBL background image reflected on the object's surface. This is because the less roughness a surface has, the more reflective it will become, almost like a mirror. Here you can see a real-life sample of reflectivity. Notice that the parts of the building further away from the eye seem more reflective. This has to do with the Fresnel reflection, of which the angle of incidence plays a large part. This basically means you'll see a more intense reflection at a lower angle, whereas if the viewer's eye is looking down at a sharper angle, you will see a less intense reflection, which in this case makes way for transparency, as you can see through the windows. Here's another example in nature. You'll see transparency in the water close up as your viewing angle is sharper, but as the eye looks further off into the distance, the reflection will become more intense. On this image of an abacus, you'll see the more intense reflection of the parts of the surface that have a lower angle of incidence. In the iRay render, this Fresnel reflection can be strengthened with the edge strength parameter. Notice that when we bring this value up that you'll see a much stronger reflection on the edges of the surface that don't have as much of a sharp angle to the eye line of the viewer. Here's a reflectivity sample with a custom roughness map. Keep in mind that the edge strength is also based on the metallic and roughness maps, and this one has an inconsistent roughness map, meaning when the reflectance is increased here, the lighter areas of the roughness map will be affected less, which show up as darker and more worn areas on your object. Edge strength will be the same. Notice that even on the areas with lower angle of incidence that the lighter areas of the roughness map will maintain a less reflective surface. Let's move on to the coding section now. Coding is similar to reflectivity, but it blends onto an object's surface, whether it is reflective or non-reflective, and has its own strength, color, and roughness parameters. A completely white color value will indicate a clear coding like we see here when we enable the coding effect. Let's change this to more of a tan, orange, slash brown color and see the difference. If we pump up the strength a bit, you can notice that the reflective spots on the surface appear to have a much stronger tint of that particular color. Edge strength will further enhance the tint of the reflective coating, particularly around the edges with lower angles of incidence as you saw in the earlier example. Here you can see a few examples of different coating strengths side by side and a comparison between two edge strength values as well. Increasing the roughness value will have predictable results by dispersing the specular highlights of the reflection and making the surface appear less polished. Let's take the roughness value to maximum and replace the current roughness map with a striped one. You'll notice that areas covered by the black areas of the roughness map will display as much more reflective, and as we take the roughness value lower, the disparity becomes less pronounced. On a wooden surface such as this one, the coating effect can simulate a clear sort of lacquer on the wood surface. You can simulate a more worn lacquer coating on the surface by combining a weaker strength value and using a washed out or faded out sort of color, like the blue we're choosing here. You'll notice that the reflective areas around the edges of the object will appear ever so slightly light blue, as if there has perhaps been an accumulation of dust and or oil on the surface over time. Finally, let's look at the anisotropy section. 
and isotropy is essentially used to simulate or mimic the look of metal that has been sanded or brushed. Notice that when we activate anisotropy, that the highlight on our object appears to sort of stretch. In these examples, you can see the result once we adjust the angle to follow along the edge surface of the mostly spherical object, and how anisotropy strength can extend that specular highlight. One value that's very important to an anisotropic effect is the roughness texture map. If we take the brightness of this map down to nearly black, then our anisotropic effect will essentially be non-existent. As it's meant to simulate brushed metal surfaces, any move to make the surface smoother and less textured will lessen the effect significantly. Let's tweak the two values in this section slightly to get a different effect. As you have seen, decreasing the strength will focus the reflective highlight more, and it won't be as stretched out, while adjusting the angle to 90 will allow us to place that reflective area more along the edge of our relatively round object. In this final example, I'm going to combine a few of the values in the Materials tab to achieve a smoother and more finely brushed version of the object we have on the screen right now. You can see that we have a lightly brushed look on the base color map, and a very apparent linear gray texture map in the bump channel. Since I want the surface to be a bit smoother, I'm going to go into the Multiplier section first and reduce the normal multiplier parameter. You'll notice a smoother surface right off the bat. Increasing the base multiplier will produce a slightly stronger appearance of the longer, finer lines on the surface of our object that are present in the original base color map. Let's enable the anisotropy effect and increase the roughness ever so slightly so that we can extend that reflection further along the curved surface. From there I'm going to increase the reflectance and further decrease the normal multiplier value for an even smoother surface and finally top it off with a slight increase in the strength of the anisotropy effect. Here is a comparison between the original iClone render, the auto eye ray settings, and the settings that we have just customized in order to achieve that smoother, more finely brushed metal look. Here's one final great example of how tweaking these values can really help to enhance the realism of your render. With the dish, we are enhancing the reflectivity as you can see along the edge. The cup and napkin are both utilizing anisotropy to give them a more brushed and slightly textured appearance, while the teapot, knife, and fork are utilizing the coating feature, with the cutlery having a slightly golden tinge. So that's about it for this tutorial, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and make sure you check out our other iRay tutorials on our YouTube channel or in our training center, as well as on our forums over at forum.reillusion.com, and I hope to see you in the next video.